Wait on. This one feels pretty heavy. Oh, because there's two. <laughs> two for Just this short, stiff, flip and stick fast rod. Not really anything would work. Uh, the shorter ones are easier to handle out here though. Definitely a stiffer rod is nicer. And I just let my weight and jigs fall to the bottom, reel up a crank or two, and bounce it off the bottom until I feel a little bit of weight on there and when you reel it up not letting any slack in there if you let any slack in the squids fall off because they're not usually hooked they're just wrapped around your uh your jig Good spot right here. Come on. <laughs> Two on the same hook. <laughs> They've moved deeper. So they were more like the 30 foot depth. Now I'm more at the 60 feet. And it's picked up out here. drop it down they're just jumping right on it
limited out in just a few hours. Not too bad of a day. Now we have to go home and clean these. Now that I have a bunch of fresh caught squid, I'm going to make some fried calamari and it's a lot easier than you would think it might be. Okay, so the first step is to clean our squid and I'm going to remove the head, which is attached to the innards, from the mantle, which is the main body cavity. So I hold down here below the eyeballs put my finger in there and give it a strong tug. So we're gonna discard all of this, the guts down here. This is the ink bladder thing. And I'm going to cut just between the eyeballs and the tentacles. And it should go pretty easily through there. And what I'm not going to keep is this hard piece in the middle with the beak attached. So this is what the beak looks like. And it is kind of like a bird beak. I'm also going to cut off these longer tentacle pieces. These are the feeler pieces. I'm just going to cut them even with the rest of the tentacles. So all of this is garbage. Next, I need to remove the quill, which is the hard cartilage piece uh, inside the mantle. You kind of have to break it away from the skin to get it to poke out like that. and just pull. You can see it kind of does look like a quill that you would write with. Then to remove the skin, I pull off the wings and then peel away the strips of skin. And then I'm just going to rinse out the inside and get rid of any remaining guts that are in there. So the last step is to cut our calamari into rings and I try to aim for between a quarter and a half inch in uh, width. Something like that. I like to do a really light breading so I have one cup of flour a half cup of cornstarch, two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of garlic powder, one half teaspoon of cayenne, and one half teaspoon of paprika. I'm just gonna whisk this all together. Okay, I've got my trifecta of fried calamari goodness set up. We've got the flour dredge that I just made, and then this is just two eggs mixed with one tablespoon of milk, and then I have a uh, panko. You can use breadcrumbs or whatever you want. So I'm going to dredge the ring in there, dip it in the egg batter, 
and then roll it in the panko. And then we're going to let it sit in there for a little bit to let the breadcrumbs set before we fry them. I've got about two inches of vegetable oil in my pan here. And I usually try to keep it around maybe 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm just going to put a few of the rings in at a time so that the temperature of the oil doesn't lower too much and then soak into the batter and create soggy rings and we're just gonna let these cook in here for maybe a minute you don't want to let it cook too long or the squid gets chewy So really these have only been in here like 30 seconds and they're done. I like to let my fried foods drain and cool on a wire cooling rack instead of paper towels. Uh, it keeps the bottoms from getting all soggy from sitting on the paper towels.